Welcome back to Belfield on Broadway. We're here at a show where you get nudity, great songs, and fantastic acting. Kyle Riabko, how are you? I'm well. I like that nudity was first on that list for you. <laughs> well, it was the thing that stuck out, if you yeah. pardon the pun, the first time I saw it. Mm -hmm. This is a great story, isn't it, that's fun and uplifting. We need something like this now. Yeah, I, I think so. I think, I mean, clearly the, the, the play takes place in the 60s, and it's, it's not a documentary about the 60s. It is the 60s. And, uh, and now more than ever, I think we're the kind of people, our young generation, that, that, that fit in that vibe. So it's just kind of telling a story of now and then. I must be your nightmare today because you've only just started in the show this week yeah. and the cast have gone to the West End that were here before mm -hmm. and now it's all about you. How do you feel? I feel great. It's not a nightmare at all. It's very relaxing and, and free and the, the, the great thing about this show is that the the message is love and peace and so really the only intention you have to have at the beginning of the show anyways is to love being there and so it's a great place to start. Yeah. Tell us about the show. I can't believe anybody doesn't know the story or hasn't heard of this because yeah. it's so renowned, especially the songs within it. But what's it about? Well, it's really a, what it's about is a, a, a group of kids, young adults who are um, called, they call themselves the tribe. This, they kind of come into the theater, the actual theater that we're in right now, the Hirschfeld Theater. And it's, it's, it's about them just exploring themselves during that night and just putting on a show for the people in the crowd at that time. And, um, but the, the storyline jeers out in that my character, Claude, is a guy who is very confused as to what to do in that he's just got his draft card, which tells him that he has to register to, to go to Vietnam to fight. And um, his confusion over whether he wants to do that or not is really what the plot of the, of the show is. Yeah. I mean, you really do have to carry this show. And the one thing about it is definitely high energy. How are you coping with that? I know you're only a few days in, but it's a yeah. tough ride, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And I think the way to cope with it is to not worry about being at 100% high energy at all times. You have to allow your tribe members to take over for you at times and sink back into that and then come to the forefront. It's, it's, a, it's a give and take. It's not... Because if you go out on stage and are spastic and in people's faces at all times, they have nothing to lean into. So you have to relax a little bit. Yeah. What's the rehearsal process like for a show like this? I mean, it's already here, so that's easier. The hard work's yeah. been done. You've yes. just got to try and recreate something yes. in your own way. How much have they allowed you to be in your part of Claude? A lot. I mean, Di Diane is uh, an incredible director and she, in that she just allows you to find it for yourself. It's We're really not reading any playbook or, or trying to copy anything. We've really kind of discovered it ourselves in a new way and, and will continue to over the next few weeks for sure. But um, so, so to answer your question, not really at all. I mean, we saw it, we watched it a couple times, but the essence of this show is being yourself. And so in that sense, the acting is in the casting. And then at that point you have to just strip any acting away. Yeah. Is it a bit distracting watching those who you're replacing because it is about you and you've got yeah. to create your own identity. You don't really want to be imitating anyone, mm -hmm. do you? Yeah, I only watched it a couple of times at the very beginning of rehearsal process and then I stopped, respectively, because I love, especially Gavin, who I'm replacing, is an incredible actor and I'm a big fan and, and good friend. So, But I thought it was important for me to not watch him too much because you don't want to start lifting your arm when he lifts his arm or nodding your head when he nods his head. That's just stupid stuff. And um, I know from experience that you can get really caught up in that and then you're not feeling the moment. Yeah. How annoyed are you on a scale of one to 10 that you're not going to London for six months? <laughs> Only annoyed because I've never been to London and I'd love to be. But you know, it's, uh, it's great for the, it's, a, it's actually kind of a really perfect train of events where they're moving and we're coming in. It's, it's fun that way. It must be like putting on a new production because it's literally yeah. an entirely new cast because the old cast have gone to London. I don't know that this has happened before other than with plays. Yeah, I've never really heard of, of this version of a replacement before. I've been a replacement guy just as one person before and man, is that nerve wracking. It is <laughs> insane because you know that all eyes are on you. So this is just a much more organic way of doing things. Yeah. All right, let's take a first piece of music from this show. There's so many that we've heard of. We'll end with Aquarius. What's yeah. your favorite in it other than that? Oh, well, I guess my favorite is I Got Life, just because it's my kind of anthem. Um, you know, it's my way of showing the audience that I'm uninhibited and, and um, free, even though the truth is I am uninhibited and not that free, um, character-wise and personally. And so it's just a great mo moment at the middle of the first act to just vomit all over the place and just, just, just let loose. You know? Is that a technical term? It is actually. It's a, it's a Meisner term. Yeah. <laughs> to vomit. <laughs> 
We're back at the Al Hirschfeld Theatre talking to the big star of the new cast of Hair. The others have now gone to the West End to take it up there and you're on Broadway, which, face it, is bigger and better. I mean, it must be nice <laughs> to be a big star on Broadway. Well, I don't really think of anyone as a big star, especially not myself. In fact, if you could see me right now, I'm very skinny and Canadian. So that, <laughs> that strips all that away. It's not really about being a big star. But, it, but being on Broadway, there is a very special, tingly, magical feeling, yeah. It must be a great thrill to be offered the role because a lot of people are after it. A lot of people are out of work and they could have chosen anybody. I guess, yeah. I mean, I just met with the creative team and did my best and made a few jokes and it worked out. I mean, it was really, yeah, I mean, you can't really think about everyone else. What's the chances of somebody like me, deeply unattractive, ginger and clinically obese, getting a role in a play like this? <laughs> I wouldn't say you're clinically obese. I mean, the chances are endless. The chances for anything are endless. There's no... I find that anytime I walk in a room thinking about the chances, there are no chances. You gotta just, just be. Yeah. I won't take any offense by the fact that you didn't pick up on the fact I said I was ugly. We'll move on from <laughs> yeah, that. Oh, yeah. Thanks. I just think it was fast. <laughs> Your accent moved past my ears. Yeah. I was looking on the internet searching for you, and it's always a worrying thing because you might find some mucky website or something. But no, you've got your own website, um, and you're an artist in your own right, which is kind of rare on Broadway because everybody wants to be the same and look the same. Yeah. You've kind of gone a different way, haven't you? Yeah. In fact, I didn't really, at the risk of sounding pretentious. I had no aspirations to be on Broadway. It was really, for me, I wanted to be um, Jimi Hendrix or, or James Taylor um, and people like that, which is actually very fitting because that's where this play t takes place. But um, that's what my dream was and I followed that dream and for whatever reason it led me to Broadway and now that I'm here I realize this has a lot to do with who I actually am. It's just, it's just kind of taking a life path that leads you to the unknown, you know. Yeah. We're here right in the center of Broadway and sat in your dressing room. It ain't that glamorous really, is no. it? The reality of theater is it's hard work, it's eight shows a week yeah. and you sat here by yourself waiting for it all to start. Yeah, there is zero glamor in it, but that makes it way more fun for me. It's wild, it's, it's real life. I let, you know, you finish a show, you walk out outside and shake a few hands and take a few pictures and then you just go straight to the grocery store and home and shove food in your face and fall asleep. It's a very, it's much more of a, of a working man's life, and I, I prefer that. You know, television or movie sets, there's always, you know, shrimp cocktails and things like that. It just takes you out of reality, and, the, and, it makes, and I think that's harder to act within that, yeah. But a bit of pampering occasionally is nice. Yeah, pampering can be nice, yeah. It just has to be, you know, soaked in reality, yeah. And let's talk about the first night when you opened, which was just earlier this week when we're taping this interview. Yeah. Were you very nervous? I wasn't nervous at all, and I, and I was I was prepared to be, and I would be um, the first one to admit I I was, but um, but I wasn't because it's a it's a tribal show. It's you have your your buddies next to you at all times. It didn't. It's not um, a singular feeling. This show, and and also, what's great about it is that our characters are so subversive, which is a word that we use in the show, that the audience is nervous. They're nervous because they know that they're involved in this show, and so the room is filled with this bundle of nerves, and as opposed to them being um, uncomfortable nerves, they're kind of just like uh, discovery nerves, you know? And so those are the kinds of things that we feel in this show, I think, they're important. This thing you mentioned about being uncomfortable in an audience, I gotta be honest with you, I don't like audience participation. Yeah. I come to see you, yes. and I spend my life in show business trying to entertain, but not on someone else's show. I wanna do yeah. my own. Yeah, you know what? I don't like audience participation either, and I also know for a fact Diane, our director, doesn't. She made that clear. But it's but this show isn't about, let's make fun of these people, let's have them dance with us because it's kooky. This is literally us in 1967 on stage at the Al Hirschfeld Theater performing for you and showing you that our message is clear and, and we actually want you to hear it. It's a, it's a more, it's a less, um, it's less for entertainment value and more for the literal words of the, of the book. And so I think that's what's the distinction between here and why I think for the most part anyways, people that come to the show really love the fact that we're running up and down the aisles as opposed to being scared of it. And you also, you, as an actor, you have to have your, your sensor on, your spider sense on because you can see if there's a guy, you know, a bald guy in the corner who's, who's like not into it, you just don't go up to him. Don't, don't start, you know, putting your hands on his forehead. <laughs> right. You, think of yeah. me as that bold guy tonight. Yeah. If yeah. you see me 
me in the audience. I, Don't come anywhere I, near me. I will not be straddling <laughs> you, sir. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. And very finally, we have to talk about the nudity. Whenever I talk sure. to anybody from this show, as you can see, I'm a deeply unattractive man and, and don't even show my arms in public. When right. does that become normal when you're happy standing on a stage stark naked? Well, I'm kind of the worst guy to ask because I don't get naked in this show. I'm the only guy. But um, I have been naked, uh, half naked before on, on stage. And I think it's just a matter of... Uh, of knowing that you're performing a, a piece and that that image is a beautiful image. No matter how much you judge it or don't judge it from an audience's perspective, you can't deny that it's, you know, it's Michelangelo-esque, it's, it's beautiful. You know, it's, it's, it's as raw as you can possibly be. And that's our goal as an actor is to, is to go as deeply. And if taking your clothes off helps, it helps. So it's, I think you're asking the wrong guy. I mean, the, the, the tribe members are really the, the bravest of them all in this show because they just, they just do it and they seem to be proud of it. Doesn't it change your opinion backstage, though, when you know what somebody looks like naked? It does change the way you look at them. Uh, maybe. I don't, I don't know. I, I guess I think ho hopefully we're, you know, yeah. artists are strong enough not to do that. You know? yeah. yeah, I'm not an artist. That's yeah. a different. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Well, a certain type of artist, maybe. Right. Listen, congratulations on this role. I'm coming to see you tonight. So I can't say whether you're any good till afterwards, yeah, but I'll put that in. Yeah. So I won't say whether you're awful or whether you're brilliant now, because yeah. that would be wrong. That would be wrong. But they tell me you're brilliant. Well, thank you. Well, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> Give your website if people want to find out about you. Sure, it's kylereapko.com, which is K-Y-L-E-R-I-A-B-K-O. Yeah, we need to work on your second name a bit. I'm Alex Belfield. That's not a showbiz name. I need to change no. mine, and you need to change yours. It's not very memorable. Yeah, well, when I signed to Columbia Records, the president <laughs> asked me to drop the I and just be called Kyle Rabko, and I was very offended and told him to screw off. <laughs> Yeah. So you're about to tell me the same. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, congratulations. Thanks. Thank you for having me in your dressing room. And uh, good luck with this show. You're in it for, for ages because you've only just started. Yeah, we just started. So it's a long run. But thanks a lot, Alex. I appreciate it.